processing. Hey there everyone, today we've got a, a nice little tutorial looking at Max OSE and then we're using Twitter as a bridge. We're going to use this great little tutorial by uh, the Digital Media Masters program at Georgia Tech where they tell us how to bring the Twitter API into processing and then we're going to use the OSCP5 package in processing to send and receive data from Max. And then we, I'll show you how to receive that in Max and you can do whatever you want with it. So this is a, a nice little look at what we're doing here. So there's a text box. We can put whatever we want in, push return, and it will populate this uh, cell block here with a bunch of values. Uh, normally it will return 10 to 14 sort of tweets per request. And I've got it doing it every time that we hit enter because if you bombard the API, Twitter will shut, the, shut you down. Uh, and you can literally search anything, anything, and it will respond. And then I don't actually have the data doing anything here, but you can see that you could reference the cell. It's just in the first row, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, etc. Uh, split down the text and do whatever you want. You could even, if it has links, you could uh, concatenate the string and remove those links and you can load photos and stuff into LCD using these variables. It's it's not a, a tutorial in using Max MSP. It's, it's a tutorial on how to send, receive data through Max and processing. So the max, max side of things is really easy. All we're doing is we're sending and receiving values. The real work is happening in processing. And this is what we use the tutorial by the uh, Georgia Tech guys to do, or to help us. But before we can get started with this, I will have to blur out this, uh, we need to download some stuff and set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new processing sketch. Uh, OSC to max to Twitter. And I am going to save that as Twitter max processing 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 demo. Save that. So now the reason we've saved that is because that will have created uh, documents, processing, Twitter Max processing demo. And to that, we're going to need to ask, add the special Twitter 4G library, which you can get from here. I will link it in the description. But what you're going to need to do is download the latest version. What you want, you're going to want to extract that Twitter 4G. So you're going to want to extract Twitter for G, go into it, and then we are looking for uh, Twitter for, no, we're looking for library, Twitter for G core. That's all we need. So I'm going to make a new folder inside my processing sketch and call it code. And inside code, we're going to take the Twitter for G dash core, whatever value you downloaded. Oh dear, it's all gone wrong. Why has this, there we go, it's back. Code, Twitter 4G core. So once you've installed Twitter 4G and it's in the file, it's gonna allow us to use the, uh, reference the Twitter 4G files. So you can see that, uh, Inside here, there is a bunch of commands and things like any general programming language library uh, that allows us to access and get special data. So there's resources for direct messaging, getting lists, uh, and then there's also user data where we can sort of find out information about, about the users. And then you'll need to dig through here and you can find out all this information and use it however you want. We are gonna directly look at the we're going to search based on a hashtag or a search value and get it to return users and tweets based on that information. So we can close that. We can close that. I'm going to reopen that sketch now that we added 
the library. And the second thing we're going to need is we're also going to need OSCP5. And to do that, that's built into processing. I'm going to add library. And then all you'd want to do is uh, search for OSC and install OSCP5 because we'll be using some commands for this later. Right, and let's get started. So to begin with, I am going to import OSCP5. I am going to declare a new OSCP5 object and just simply call it OSC. We're going to have one in, one out, all based on that same information. I'm going to make a net address uh, and call it my remote location. I am going to add a configure builder CB. So this is this is stuff directly related to that Twitter uh, 4J library that we added. I'm going to call it new configure builder. I'm going to declare a new Twitter. Query, query for Twitter. Class configure builder does not exist. Configuration, your nation. Configuration builder, not configure builder. And this is the same here, configuration builder. There we go. So these underlines should just, should just tell us that the, the variables aren't being used. I'm going to make a string that I'm going to call hashtag. This is going to be our search parameter and I'm going to give it a default value of something like hello. So that means that it doesn't search for a blank variable and we get lots of issues if we haven't received anything. I'm going to make an array list and call it tweets. So we need somewhere to store all that data when we search for it. Array list tweets. And that's all our variables, so now I'm going to void setup. And in setup, this is where we are going to handle all of our Twitter authentication. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bunch of Twitter information. So we do our configuration builder we're going to need a consumer key, a con consumer key secret. And it used to be in the past that the Twitter API would let you query things, just read only without the need for this sort of authorization. But in the past few years, they've changed it. So you need to authorize no matter what you're doing with Twitter. So OAuth access token. And then we have Access token secret here. And these are specific to both every app with consumer key. Consumer, it's just consumer secret here. Uh, so these are specific to both every app that you create and you as a developer registered on Twitter. So to get one, what you need to do is go to developer.twitter. That's not the right address, dev.twitter.com. You should be logged in and then down the bottom, there'll be something called manage your apps down here. You're going to create an app, name it processing OSC thing a app for tutorial in max msp and processing or maxims msp and processing website here you just need to put in a default website so i'm just going to link back to mine at the moment we don't need a callback url 
I'm going to push yes to agree, but if you are actually building an app, it's very important you read this because it talks about sort of just the fair usage of the API and what you agree to use the user's data for and how you agree to use it. And when you create your app, you'll see that you get consumer keys, you can go into manage keys and access tokens, and in here you'll have a consumer key, a consumer key secret, and then you can also create access tokens for this app. So you're going to want to create access tokens. You're going to want to use these to fill in that information that I showed over there. And now I am going to revoke that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that application just in case I let the access token slip by mistake. And I've got other information that I'm using down here. Right, so all you need to do is copy and paste the information into the relevant fields and keep the speech marks around it. It needs to be a speech field, uh, but obviously you won't be able to see that on mine because I need to blur this out because they need to be secret. Otherwise you could access this app and query Twitter as if you were me and I actually use these for an application. So once you've added that, that is now when we start run our Twitter app or when we run this process sketch, it's going to authenticate with Twitter through our configuration builder that we made up here. What we need to do now is tell our Twitter instance to use that configuration builder to access Twitter. So we're going to do Twitter instance, Twitter in stance is equal to new Twitter factory cb dot build brackets close brackets dot get instance semicolon. Okay, so now we are setting up our Twitter authentication, starting it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add something here called fetch tweets and we are going to create this function down below and set up and the reason I'm putting that in setup is I don't want it to constantly repeat every time that the patch draws uh, if we were to put it in draw so I'm just going to do void draw and leave that blank because we don't need it so now void uh, fetch tweets open close and in here, we are going to add a new query for Twitter e equals new query. And our query basis is going to be our hashtag variable. And we are going to set this all within a try loop, uh, a try catch loop, because if you didn't and Twitter didn't respond, the process and sketch would just go to infinity trying to query this data and not get anywhere. So if you had no internet access, for instance, or Twitter refused your authentication, this try catch will let us know. So we do try catch open and catch Twitter exception TE. So I'm just, before I go in and add all the extra code, I'm just adding this in case Twitter does have a, a a little hissy bit with us. Print ln couldn't connect space plus t. So now what we've got is when we tell it to fetch tweets, it's going to query Twitter for something. And then we're in this try, we're going to tell it if it does get a response from Twitter, we're going to tell it to do something. Otherwise, it's going to tell us that we couldn't connect to Twitter and why we couldn't connect to Twitter. TE stands for Twitter exception. Uh, it's just a variable name in here. Twitter exception is actually the uh, Twitter 4J command to tell us what went wrong. So in try, we are going to add query results. So we're going to get the results from this query up here. 
uh, results equals Twitter. So search query for query. I'm just going to paste that in there because I can't be bothered typing it again. So now we've got query results. Query results does not exist. Query result is what we want. Query result results. So we're we're starting query result. The new results variable is going to give us the Twitter instance search, aka our Twitter instance we made with the search results for this query here. And then we are going to put that into a variable called our tweets variable it is now equal to array list. We need to add a real list here because this Twitter query result will just give us back a, a essentially a void of type list of information so we need to tell it that it's a list we're making results dot get tweets and that's it so we have asked Twitter f to search for something we are then telling it that that result information is going to be a list of information. And with that list of information, we are getting a list of tweets that match this information. And at the very end, between the catch and the fetch, we're going to do something called draw tweets, another function. And down here, we're going to do void draw tweets, open close, draw tweets. How are we going to draw the tweets? Well, we're going to put them in a very simple for loop just now. Instead of drawing the tweets when we send it to Max, we're actually going to send the tweets, but this is just a, a nice uh, testing parameter that I, I add. So we're going to do for int equals i equals zero. Oh, I'm having a nightmare right now. i equals zero. Well, i is less than tweets dot size. So we are using the length of the tweets array that this creates up here to determine how long that we draw tweets for. And then i plus plus, i plus plus, close brackets, open, status, t equals status. So again, because the information we get from the, the results up here is going to be completely blank of variable type, we're going to give it one. So we're going to do status tweets dot get i. So it's going to go into this array list essentially and get us the, the tweet that relates to this uh, section of the array. String user, we're going to splice the user information from it, t dot get User dot get name and then string message equals t dot get text so what we're doing in the draw is we're telling it to loop through the entire array and then for every time for every loop we get that tweet instance instance and then we splice out its user and its message data. Right, and now all we need to do is print that data to test it. So I'm gonna do print message, message plus speech colon space colon plus user semicolon. And now let's see if it works. Test hashtag, it's capital T. So what you'll see is you get the completely blank box because we have set up no information about our Twitter drawer at all. But if we scroll up here, you can see that we get a bunch of information that relates to the hashtag hello. And we can change this variable to whatever we want. So test data, rerun the pat, rerun the sketch. And you'll see we just get a random jumble of text. So that's the first half of the, the uh, testing done. We know that we can access Twitter using this information here and we know that when we use that information or when we authenticate with this information our application works because we can go get 
get search data from our hashtag search and uh, return it. So what we need to do now is add our OSC communication because we want to both receive this search parameter and send the returned information to Max MSP. So at the very top, we started our OSC stuff, but now we're going to add in the rest of it into our setup and draws. So inside setup, above fetch tweets, fetch tweets needs to be the last thing that happens in setup. We are going to OSC equals new OSC P5. This so what this is saying here is we've already declared OSC up here as a, an object of the OSC library, and now we're, we're actually initializing it in the patch, or in the sketch. And I'm saying this as in localhost 1200. So we're gonna look on port 1200 for any information that comes in to processing. So this is looking for OSC data into processing. Will be used for the search. And then below that, we are going to add my, my remote uh, location is equal to new net address space, 127.0.0.1 speech comma 1300 and if you haven't guessed already uh, my remote uh, is used for sending data we see data from processing will be used to send twitter data so we will look for the search parameters <clears throat> on this, and then we will send it out on that. Magic. Okay. So the only thing we need to do now is we need to add, there's two things we need to do. We need to do something when we receive OSC data, uh, AKA when that port 1200 up here receives something we're gonna tell it to replace the hashtag. And then we're also gonna do something that sends the tweets back when we receive OSC data. So it'll go that we receive data, processing processes it, and then sends it max to max MSP. So we're gonna do void OSC event, OSC message, the OSC message and then I'm just going to print the address or print the data print the OSC data received wow heaved so this is just a little sort of uh, testing to make sure that we are actually receiving data from Max into processing. So we're going to do print I received an OSC message. Print speed value plus the OSC the OSC message get zero. So I know from Max, I'm only gonna be sending it one OSC message. So I'm gonna do get zero, the first in the OSC message array. And then I know I'm gonna be sending a word. So I'm gonna put string value. If you're sending it integers or floats, you change string float, string integer, string uh, float from string value. Print ln. So now every time it receives a, a, an OSC message, it will print the value of that message as long as it's a string. Otherwise it will give us an error and get angry. 
And then what I'm also going to do in here is every time it receives an OSC message, I'm going to tell it to update our hashtag. So hashtag is equal to the OS, OSC message dot get zero dot string value. And then to test that, we do print hashtag colon. And if I add one at the start and one at the end of this, we should see hashtag updating as it goes. I am going to close that. And then I am going to uh, OSC event. So OSC event is a function that's built into the OSC P5 library. So I know that this exists looking at the examples and this is a very similar test message that they have in the OSC message example. So if you're unfamiliar with the uh, P5 library, I'd by all means go file examples and work with what they have in here under contributed libraries because it's fantastic for sending and receiving and handling data. I'm going to save it and make sure it works. And then I am going to make an OSC test bed. So I'm going to open Max. And then I'm not going to use OSC, we're going to use UDP in Max. And we're going to use UDP send. It's yellow because we've not declared a port. So it's UDP. And we know based on this here, this is what it's looking. Uh, we know this is the local host here. Zero point zero point zero point one twelve hundred. So now if I send stuff into this, it will be received over here. Now we're not doing any sort of routing on the OSC message, but we need to start all OSC messages with a hash. And I'm just gonna do tweets space test. Plug that in. Make sure this runs. Uh, syntax are missing a semicolon up here is missing a semicolon. Hashtag needs capital. Hashtag also needs capital. So now again, we should see the exact same thing happening. We get a random print and we do test tweet. And you can see here that we have received, uh, let me put these on new lines. And rebuild it. So now when I push test tweets, you'll see that test data is what it used to be before. It is now received an OSC message. Its value is test because it looks for the, the first hash. It's, it knows that that hash isn't a value. It's a routing of part of OSC and test is our value. And then it prints the updated hashtag. Perfect. So we, I can get rid of that. I can get rid of that. I'm also going to get rid of that. So now we have every time that we set processing sees an OSC data come in, it just automatically strips it because we are know how we're controlling the OSC being sent. The final thing we need to do is send all the tweets that are received back into process uh, back into Max MSP. So to do that, we are going to do UDP receive on port 1300. I won't want too many zeros. Port 1300. We're going to route it via tweets because that's a value that we're going to use later. We're going to plug in a from symbol because we need it to be in text form rather than the gibberish that processing will send. And then we simply plug it into a cell block. Just going to quickly do some editing here to change the way that this is set up because we only want number of columns we only want one column number of rows we want about 14 and i'm just going to stretch that down there so now if we send osc data on port 1300 like processing is set up to we hope that it will automatically populate here right send tweets it's very similar to draw tweets but this time we actually output onto uh, the OSC port. So we're going to do send tweets. 
All right, send tweets. Uh, so same again, we're gonna have this piece of information. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. I'm going to Alt T or Command Control T to auto format the, the patch or the sketch just to reset that. And then instead of, instead of printing the message, what we're gonna do is we are going to OSC message. We're gonna declare a new OSC message to go into the OSC port. My message equals new OSC message, hashtag tweets. So again, it needs to have a hashtag value at the start and that's where this comes in. So we're gonna route all information received on this OSC port. If it starts with tweets, like our message here is going to, it's gonna route that into this for, from symbol into the cell block. My message dot add. So we're gonna add something to our message. So at the moment it just says hashtag or slash tweets. I'm going to add set zero. Or, I won't do that yet. So I'm just going to user plus semicolon space plus message. So right now we're gonna send a message that is slash tweets space user colon message. And then we OSC dot send my message over my remote location. Test it, user cannot be resolved. Oh, no capital U there. So now it's running. I'm gonna add a little debug here. Send test tweets. Oh, I've not added anything to actually run send tweets. So at the end of, at the end of OSC event, I'm going to rerun fetch tweets so that it researches Twitter using our new hashtag. And then at the bottom of fetch tweets, instead of draw tweets, I am going to send tweets. Uh, fetch tweets with a capital F. So the system will work like this. We search for a new value in Max MSP. So we send something into here, processing it receives it, changes our hashtag variable, runs fetch tweets. And fetch tweets then searches Twitter with that new variable. If Twitter responds positively to our authentication, it will then output an array called tweets that contains all that information. And then once it's done that, it will then send tweets, aka down here, it will loop through that array and then send us a username and a message all over the OSC port we defined at the very top. So run that. We can see that everything authenticates down here and using the base was it hashtag test data, we get a response in here. But you can see it's not being filtered through our from symbol properly because cell block needs some additional information at the start of the message. But we know that our loop now works. So down here in front of the user and message, to set the values in a cell block, we need to set zero because I only want them to go into this row here. Zero space plus. I plus user. Oh, I'm going to add a space in here as well. So what this is doing is it's it will now pass a message that instead of just slash tweets, it will say tweets set zero plus whatever sort of loop through the array we are plus user plus semicolon plus message. So now if we test this we should see our cell blocks populate with both the user, semicolon, and then their tweet. We just need to extend the length of the column width. Well, for now, a tweet can only be 140 characters long. If you set it to about 1,001 width, you're normally going to get all of the information. So you can see there that this is all related to hashtag test data. If we just put it through test, it will change with just test. Fantastic. 
So now we have the complete processing sketch and our we have the data in Max MSB that we can do whatever we want with. Uh, I'm not going to add a tutorial on how to do that, but all you'd need to do is look through cell 0 to 4, however long your array is, you can pass that through an OSA as well. How long is this data here? Uh, and then you can then sample that down and do whatever you want with it. To do a bit of a neater text input, you can do something like uh, text text edit make that a bit smaller I'm going to add an if dollar sign i1 is equal to 10 then bang um, then bang and what that's reading is ASCII value of the character type. So if someone types something and hits enter, it will then bang and send that message into the, we need a root text because this always outputs text in front of whatever it is receiving. We are going to prepend slash tweets because we know we need to have a, a slash something to, in front of our OSC message. And that's that. So now we should do hello test. So you can see that it's changing. It doesn't even need to be a pat dash tag. And if you separate them by space, it will search Twitter with lots of words. Cats, rainbow, holiday. Take that as you will. And there you go. That's a, a nice way to use processing to access the Twitter API and Max MSP as a referencing tool for it. If this gets a lot of interest, I might come back and actually do something with this parsed data. Go crazy. Do something fun. See you in the next one.